Hello and welcome to Real Talk with QNet. And today, I'm excited because we've got V partner Kavita here. Kavita, how are you today? Very good. Kavita, you've got a reputation for being a strong leader who knows how to kick ass when needed. Uh, but I bet you also have a different side that the public doesn't see much of. So who is Kavita when she is not wearing the business leader cap? You know, you think that I'm somebody who kick asses because you read one of my messages by <laughs> mistake that I posted in that group. Uh, well, most of, the, most of the people think that. But, uh, and maybe I am like that in the business. But when I'm not networking or when I'm not doing the business, I'm a couch potato. I am absolutely different than how I am in the business. So it's my couch, me, Netflix. I do a lot of cooking. Okay. I am somebody who roams around in the house with a with a cloth to keep cleaning it everywhere. <laughs> and uh, that's who I am. I love my me time. Yeah. No phone calls, uh, no, uh, no messages, no emails, nothing. And that's who I am. I hate going out. I hate going out to party. I hate going out to uh, see a movie, watch a mu movie, nothing. I just like to sit at home. Right. Because I think in our business, we travel so much and we are all the time outside. So when I'm not actually doing the business, I like to be home. Fair. But I, I mean, I follow you on Instagram and I notice that you practice yoga regularly. Yeah. So, I mean, how does yoga influence your approach to business? Uh, so when I started yoga, of course, in 2020, I had put on a lot of weight. 2020, 2021. Before that, I also I used to do yoga, but I stopped and then I put on a lot of weight. Lockdown, mm -hmm. everything happening on Zoom, you're yeah. eating all the time. There's no physical, to go. Yeah. No physical activity. Yeah. And um, I grew big and I started walking like a penguin. <laughs> you know, that's okay. when I... <laughs> started taking yoga very seriously I started not to lose weight just to be more flexible mm -hmm. and uh, so it made me calmer you know it made me calmer but I don't know if it was good for me because my team couldn't recognize me after that and they were like oh now when I come when, when I come to you for the issue you're not actually beating me you're not actually getting angry on me and you're right. telling me okay come sit let's oh, no. talk <laughs> come sit let's talk so I, I got a little confused that, okay, is it the right thing to do or, or right. not? But yeah, it had a lot of calming effect and I've been very regular. And uh, it's, it's a part of lifestyle now. And but ha how, is it, how has it affected the business? I mean, the intensity that you used to be working at uh, changed after yoga, which means... Uh, my reactions it... to the problems actually okay. changed. Okay. You know? But you still address the problems. It was just yeah, a yeah. different approach. Yeah, yeah, of course. I still address the problem, but my reaction actually changed a lot. It made me more calmer. I right. don't know how, but it did. Okay. So I imagine you're in a tough situation. Mm. All right. Uh, people all around you, oh, well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> people around you, uh, they're not helping it. They're not helping making it better. Okay. So you're in a tough situation. People around you are not helping making it better. They're actually making it worse. Okay. Mm. So. At that moment, it feels like the walls around you are kind of on fire and you really just want to scream, okay? Mm. Now, what is it that you, you do to bring yourself back to peace in that moment? You mentioned yoga, but mm. a major situation, emergency crisis happening. How do you bring yourself back to peace? It's yourself? very difficult, Trevor. Very, very difficult for me because I am really hyper as a person. Mm -hmm. Like, it's... I want solutions very quickly. I don't have patience. I don't have tolerance. I, and, you know, I was that kind of a person. So, of course, yoga yoga is one practice. But apart from that, now I think, I don't know how it happened. But uh, I just keep quiet now for some time. Till the time my emotions are not in my control. You, you know? keep quiet? Yeah. And what's going on? There's a lot going on. Uh, and I'm trying to process it. And after I process it, process it, and then I react now. Mm -hmm. Earlier, it used to be like, there's already fire and I'm putting more, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? More kerosene in the fire. Right, right, <laughs> right. Right? Because there's already fire. I'm also reacting. Everybody else is also reacting. So now I think, I don't know how it happened. But uh, organically now, 
when there's a lot of issues going on, I sit with myself till the time I don't resolve uh, things in my head, I do not take any action. So yeah, people feel it's not instant, but it's definitely more effective. Mm -hmm. It's more thoughtful. It's more thoughtful. Right. Interesting. Let's get to some fun questions now that we mm -hmm. got from the intense questions here. <laughs> If you were to create a, a signature yoga pose for entrepreneurs like yourself, what would it be called and how would it look? It's a fun question, right? So, <laughs> so, so I think every entrepreneur or every curator, <laughs> at least, yeah. you know, you know, you know this diamond pose. Uh, when you're on the, knee, you're on, on the floor on your, on your knees and yeah. your feet are behind you, yeah? Yeah. yeah? yeah, no, you basically do this and then you... You sit down. Right. And there should be fire down. Fire, fire down. There should be fire down. And the mudra should be this. Three and three, right? And there should be a lot of fire. <laughs> there should be a lot of fire in you to actually do this. If you could magically teleport to any destination right now, where would it be and why? I would like to go to Japan. Where in Japan? I don't know where, but in Japan because, because I heard the toilets are very clean. <laughs> And then everything has a button. <laughs> yes, yeah, very magical <laughs> toilets. They even play music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there is something something called soundproofing. Right. So you don't want. Sorry, but I don't know if I can say this. Oh, please want, go ahead. If you don't want other people outside to listen to your business, yeah. then you put that music on yeah. so that nobody can. So you have it. a soundtrack for your for your business. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, so interesting. Okay, interesting. Why you would go to Japan? I like that. <laughs> but I mean. Overall, you've traveled to some amazing places um, because obviously I follow you, follow you on Instagram, so I know. Um, can you share a funny or unexpected moment from one of your trips? Okay, the funniest thing was, so we, so I was in Paris with, with a friend of mine, okay, me and uh, Omita. So we were in Paris and I, I, I promised her, uh, she, was, she was going through cancer. And I said, when you come clean, when you are clean completely, and then we'll go for a trip. So me and her, we went for uh, went to Paris because she wanted to go to Paris. So we went there and it was freezing cold. It was two degrees and we were like dying. Okay. And she is somebody who likes to go to every place. Like she wants to see everything that's there in Paris. And I'm somebody who likes to sit in a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> so morning six o'clock. Okay. It's two degrees. And morning six o'clock, we are standing and we were waiting for our car to come. And there's this one... You know how French men are, they're very good looking, you know, tall, nice, handsome people. And there's this one guy, okay, who was wearing this black long overcoat and really tall and wearing a hat and he was crossing the street. And we didn't talk to each other, we were, <laughs> we were looking at him, okay. And this guy crossed the street and I'm looking at him and suddenly he comes, he opens the garbage uh, tin, he removes the garbage and puts it in the van and goes. He was a, he was a garbage guy. <laughs> And we looked at each other and we both started laughing. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, even the people who pick up garbage from the streets are really, really good looking there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if you were to describe your entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial journey with a movie title, what would it be? Can I say a Hindi name? Of course you can. Yeah. Ye kahan aagay hum? Ye kahan aagay hum means, where have I come? Like, where have I reached? Okay. So there are two things. Of course, I mean, the kind of life that I was leading before, after business, it completely changed. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I sit and wonder that, you know, where God has actually made me come. Like, there's a lot of gratitude in everything mm -hmm. what, what, what God has given me. But at the same time, when you receive those 3 a.m. phone calls, because, you know, once you are an upline, you take care of people's family issues, yeah. health issues, uh, downline issues. Husband, wife issues, brother, sister issues, all the issues. Yeah. So, you know, after 12, when people actually stop showing the presentations, that's the time that they start calling and talking about all these things. So sometimes I wonder, those 3 a.m. calls, 2 a.m. calls. And after I'm done with those calls, it's like, Ye gaya? Where, have I, where have I reached? So, so, so yeah, I mean, it, the, the feeling is, of course, there's a lot of gratitude. But sometimes I wonder, like, how am I able to, you know, to, to, to do all this? And so many people actually put in so much of trust and faith and they share so yes. many things and they expect you to, they, they really feel I'm a superwoman can actually resolve everything that's going wrong in their life. So right. it's very overwhelming. Wow. 
So the 3 a.m. calls are more of the the Kavita hotline, yeah. handling all the personal and issues. Of course, and you, you know, your energy also goes down a right. bit. And so nothing after the call is over. It's unbelievable. And then, well, then so it, what do you do? Like, you, you really <laughs> literally say unbelievable after the call? Or how do you... I started do you... doing that because I used to go to bed thinking about the same thing and wake up with the same thought. Right. And it wasn't healthy. So to just come out of it... So you cleanse yourself by screaming, unbelievable. <laughs> Amazing. If you've had to sum up your business philosophy uh, in one hashtag, what would it be? Dare to dream. Hashtag dare to dream. Final question. Mm. If you could time travel and share one secret with your 10-year-old self, what would mm. it be? Not everything is so serious. Not everything should be so serious. It's okay to have fun, it's okay to enjoy, and it's okay to not feel guilty about it, you know. And I think I've learned this lesson after a very, very long time. Uh, I used to feel guilty for taking holidays. I used to feel guilty for leaving my team even for two days. I used to feel guilty about everything, you know. It was more like a mother's guilt that I'm leaving my kids, you know. Uh, but now I think, uh, you know, I've worked on it myself and I don't feel that guilty now. So uh, to my 10 year old, I'll say it's okay. N not everything is, uh, you know, so very important in life. You yourself are very important and it's okay to enjoy. It's okay to laugh a little and not be so intense every time. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for this one. This was, this was, this was a blast. Thank you. thank you very much for joining us on Real Talk with QNet. We'll see you again.